What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome into the Week 12 Trade Values Chart Stream. I'm your host, Simon, joined as always by my co host, Josh, and the man of the hour, the guru of the trade charts himself, <laughs> Alex, aka Peaked in High School. What's up, Alex? Not a lot. Happy to be here, guys. It's always great to see you on a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Feeling <laughs> good on a Wednesday. This is my favorite oh, lunch hour of the whole week, whenever we get to come on here and answer some trade questions. Uh, for those of you watching right now, if you have not done so already, make sure you're checking out Alex's charts. Uh, you can find them on Reddit under his username, Peaked in High School. He posts them each and every week. And I believe you said in your post today, you're going to keep posting them through the end of the season, right? For all the degenerates who keep still liking to look at this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll probably get less and less in each post. <laughs> Uh, of actual writing because at some point i was just like who the fuck cares anymore uh why are you looking at this like uh yeah but yeah we'll keep going some 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 leagues are weird and i've, I've seen leagues that will trade in the playoffs and stuff yeah. and i'm not not really a fan of that style personally but i, I get it everyone you know each their own and well, uh, I, I know some the value if uh, some if leagues I, leagues some leagues I've seen uh they'll they'll eliminate people that can't make the playoffs yeah. that they're not able to trade at that point which I like. I do like yeah. that as a rule, just in general. Yes. I, I do yep. as well. Even with a trade deadline, I'm I'm completely fine with that. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. We got Mike in here saying the boys. Yeah, the boys are back, and we're going to be What's going up, through Mike? this. Um, Alex, before we start getting questions in here, I wanted to ask you about what was going on here at the top of this board. So it looks like most of the top-tier running backs dropped in value this past week. Everyone except for Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey up there in the top tier. Um, was that due to other players rising or is this more of a underperforming player thing with them dropping like that? I, I, I would say with a lot of this, we'll, we'll throw out Najee Harris because he's kind of the same. I think it's more of uh, between last the the two weeks before this, uh, 10 and 11, the, the rankings were tighter. So there was less variance between the sources that I aggregate uh, and that that creates very stable ranks. Right. But this week, Jonathan Taylor, Dalvin Cook, Austin Eckler – there was less consensus, which creates mm -hmm. more movement, uh, which which drop, so Dalvin Cook dropping two really is not statistically significant. Uh, but but that's really what drives the the differences is the less consensus, I guess, mm -hmm. is the way to look at it. Yeah. Got to say yeah. that Najee is still surprising, though, dropping 12. Yeah. It's just like he, it's not like he did anything. To, I he mean, he carries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There, there's but a he, little bit of a concussion scare in the middle of the game. Yes, I was yeah. thinking maybe that could be a part of it. But yeah, I think I think the way I was looking at it is he, I mean, he took some, was it two big hits? One where, well, I mean, I thought that dude looked concussed for sure. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. I, I, I was like, oh, oh in oh, the oh. in the fourth quarter of that game, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think but it's, yeah, I think head hit, like hit the ground. He kind of got flipped around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of experts are hedging that with his, he's a rookie. There's the rookie wall with the, I mean, he's at 400, a pace of 400 touches or something insane i mean for someone vet me i don't care 400 plus touches <laughs> Who, you're, you're probably to, right yeah it's hard, it's hard to believe that he'll be able to keep this up and i think i think they're baking that into his rank where i mean he didn't really he didn't drop he didn't move he might have even moved up it's it's that they're worried that he's not gonna be able to sustain it through your playoffs which is what matters yeah oh, and he, he pushed his trainer or coach according to to jo <laughs> And, and maybe that does affect him a little bit. Maybe the coaching staff sees that. He, they're like, he's a rookie. You can't be doing this stuff. We're going to we're gonna punish you a little bit more or less, you know? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the main one. Same thing. It's the same thing with Zeke, right? 400 touch pace. We know Zeke is banged up, right? He is having a knee issue. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the same reason he would drop. And then Chubb's similar, obvious. Not, not injury, but, I mean, Hunt's back. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's practicing this week. And I, I just to go to back to your old, earlier point, Alex. Uh, like, you know, I'm 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 personally happy you're going to continue putting these out while uh, there's not many trades going to be going down. This does provide a great guideline just in terms of like how strong my team is, how strong my players are. I I, I love looking at these charts personally. So. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, guys, to everyone in the chat, we're going to try to primarily focus on trade questions on this show. We are going to be live for office hours later today, answering any and all questions. We'll answer a couple of these in here while yeah. we're getting started. Um, Mike Duke wants to know, should I start Elijah Moore over Brandon Cooks? Might sound ridiculous, but Cooks is just not it right now. So I'm just curious where Elijah Moore is on this chart because he's I been picking too. it up lately. He has been... 
He's, he's been at different. eight point five, and he's actually finally like officially on the chart. He was at one point five coming into this week. I'm sure previous to that, he wasn't even listed, right? Right, Alex? When you yeah, 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 he uh, two weeks ago he was definitely not on it. So he, I mean, it's not a meteoric rise, but really a pretty aggressive rise. We, we like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about his value at eight point five? You think that's enough? You think he should be higher? I honestly think it might be a little bit of a value. I, I took a while to buy in, but you look at his past four games. Um, six targets, eight targets, six targets, 11 targets. And even before that, six target in the previous game, PPR fantasy points, you've got a minimum of 13.1 over that stretch with two games over 25 PPR fantasy points. It looks like the Jets are realizing Elijah Moore is their number one receiver. Now, what makes me nervous in this question yep. is that Zach Wilson is getting yeah. a start this weekend. It's not Joe Flacco. It's not Mike White. Um, it is Zach Wilson. But who's he's had all this production with, not yeah, Zach Wilson. Not Zach yeah, Wilson. Yeah. I, I think I would still be willing to go Elijah Moore because it seems like the coaching staff has realized how to use him differently in this offense compared to the first six weeks of the season. Um, Josh, would you go Brandon Cooks here? <sighs> See, you know, I'm I'm a little bit of a Brandon Cooks fan. I know he's been uh disappointing. Uh he was disappointing last week, it was on a buy the week before that, but he's been super consistent all season. Um and he, they play the New York Jets. They're playing each other, right? Uh, both of these teams have weak defenses. So uh, I, I think I'd lean Brandon Cooks personally. Alex, what about you? I, I think it depends what you need. You have to look at your matchup and see uh, if you need safety. I think Brandon Cooks is more likely to be safe, right? He's going to get his. He We know his quarterback is Terod. Like, he's going to do what he does. If you want someone that has the chance to explode, even if it's with Wilson, that's where I would look maybe at Elijah Moore. So I think it's more contextual. Either are the right mm -hmm. answer. Uh, if you're looking for safety, probably Cooks. If you're looking for – you need that two touchdowns and 132 yards. That's probably where I'm going to be looking at someone else. That makes sense. Uh, we got Stefan in here. says, hey, I'm a big fan of all of you and especially <laughs> peaked in high school. Love your work. We're big fans of him as well, Stefan. Um, Kelly, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry just ahead. back to back to the Brandon Cooks discussion. Uh, another reason why I do lean his direction is because he is the one on his team, which maybe, you know, the defense is focused on a little, a little bit more. But there are other options that I'm a little bit nervous taking away targets from Elijah Moore. But you can make yeah. the argument both ways there. So 100 percent. Kelly on in here says, would you do Brandon Cooks and Gibson for D Hop and Ooh. Carter? So let's see what the charts have to say about this one. So yeah. where where are we going to find so, D Hop? Or we so can start on the left Cooks side. Is, so Brandon Cooks is at 12.5. Um, and Diop's at 21. 20, Diop's at 21. And then Gibson, he's at 22. So Carter's that's 34.5 on the Brandon Cooks and Gibson side. And then Carter, where's Carter? Carter should be in this range somewhere, huh? Probably gone uh, down he's, a little Oh, he bit, lost 11. So he's at yeah. 9. So we, we have a 30 versus a... 34.5 i believe yep yeah. on the brandon cooks um, and gibson side so the tree chart is going on the brandon cooks and gibson side when you break this down it's like i would rather have the d hop and carter side if i was already in the playoffs yeah if i needed to win now i'd rather have the brandon cooks and gibson side yeah so it's 100 team context either side is correct and it's probably a win-win trade if a team mm -hmm. needs to need some players alive to make the playoffs Brandon Cooks and Gibson are, are living players. Yeah. <laughs> if you need some players who aren't going to help you this week and maybe not even next week, D Hop yeah. and Carter for sure. But I, I'd like them in the playoffs if it's locked up. I'm I'm with you guys there. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, SJ Douglas. So this is a dynasty one that says Russell Wilson for a late first and a late second round pick or Tom Brady for a late first, which is the better deal trying to make a push this year. But next year is really what I am most hopeful about. So it looks so, like trying to trade for one of the quarterbacks. Um, is what I'm guessing since it's a dynasty. It's got to be super flex, right? At, at giving up a, a first and a second for. Yeah, in a super flex, I, I couldn't give up a first for either of these guys, to be honest. I mean, in non super flex. In a super yeah. flex, it does change things, obviously. And seems reasonable. That's why I'm. I, yes. Not that it necessarily changes it a whole ton. Uh, a late first for Tom Brady's seems very reasonable. Uh, he's going to be better this year, next year. I don't know how I feel. And he has what Matt Ryan and Trevor Lawrence. That makes me actually lean Russ a little bit more because Matt Ryan, I think is on his way out. Lawrence probably isn't. So I, I think Russ has what he's 32, 30, uh, 33, somewhere here, in that range. I would say. Here's how I feel about it though. If they're, if you're making a push and you're giving up mm -hmm. these picks anyways, the goal is to win a championship right away right like if you can try to make that that w i know he said next year is what he's hopeful about but trying to make a push this year 
give me Tom Brady. I think Tom Brady is going to be the one that helps you win the championship more this year, gives you the best shot over Russell Wilson. So I'll go, I'll go that side, but I hundred percent get what you're saying, Alex. I, I, uh, I think it depends on how you want to play. If you think you've got a good shot this year, like if Tom Brady will be what pushes you over the edge, then I'm making that trade for Brady. Yeah. And if, and if you are, trades are fine. just barely in the playoffs and your team is meh, I don't, I think that's, I think that's decent for getting Russell Wilson as super flex, to be honest. Oh yeah. The, the, these are both good both enough values great. for yeah. these quarterbacks. I think yeah, absolutely. Very I, 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 I lean trying to get Russell Wilson personally. I just okay. think it's a little bit more dynasty value, but I understand what you're saying too, Simon. Yeah. I, if I'm Tom Brady is a better win now quarterback when it comes down to it. Maybe he's better next year too. Shit. Who knows? Maybe, yeah, maybe he's better <laughs> in three years. Like we, I don't, we know, don't even know <laughs> where Russell Wilson is going to be next year. He, he, there's a real chance, but he's, he's not with the Seahawks, but he's, he's Russell Russ, Wilson. Right? It, yeah, it's yeah. probably an upgrade, whatever team he goes to after this. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe, we'll see. maybe we'll see. Calvin <laughs> says, what running back could I get if I package Damian Harris, Godwin, and or maybe Mike Williams in non PPR? So this is a half PPR trade chart, but we can probably figure out about what the values would be. Josh, you want let's let's add so, some of these so, together. So Damian Harris would be 17.5. Um Godwin, I'm assuming is up here. He's gonna be at 25.5. Um, and then Mike Williams. Mike Williams, I'm like, he's gonna be at 16. Yeah. So so if if we're just pairing Godwin and uh, Damian Harris, who's seventeen point five and twenty five point five, you know that's going to give us forty three. About you know, so, so let's see what we got up there. Yep, it's forty three exactly for so those two. He's looking for a running back. I would say people like James yeah. Robinson would get it done. Probably Saquon Barkley. Maybe it's not going to be enough to get Swift. Probably not enough to get Barkley. But um, yeah. Henderson. I think there's a chance you could get Barkley. I mean, I know the owner's been holding on through this injury, but he didn't have a very good game, and maybe they're a little bit nervous. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, th those would be who I would aim for for sure. And then when we add 16 to that, where do we? What, what's that? Matter? So yeah, that's going to put us up here in the more elite running back category, I think. Um, so would you trade Godwin, Mike Williams, and Damian Harris to get Nick Chubb? Yes. 100% depends on your team. That's a great point. Value wise, <laughs> value wise, I would do it. But if Godwin and Mike yeah, Williams, you need the wide receiver. By, if they're being and, replaced by Cole Beasley and Tim Patrick, then I'm not making that. Yeah, trade. no, hey, hell no. And and I would you trade all three of those players, assuming that they two of them are bench, right? What you're, what you're trying to do is sub out Damien Harris. You're your starting Godwin, but you have another yeah. good wide receiver yeah. you can use kind of deal. Would you go for Kamara or Zeke? Think knowing they might be out this week, you're trading a lot of depth for those two potentially injured players. How do you feel about that? If you're already in the playoffs, I think you can make that move. If if you've got a playoff yeah. spot locked up, um, then I think you can make that move and try to grab a Kamara Zeke for the playoffs and just eat a loss this week if that's what it means. Um, I'm fine. This is the time of year like fantasy football takes a little bit of luck too to win championships. It's not just it's not just the skill game. Things have to happen, and so if you can. There's high risk moves you can make this time of year that that might pay off, and that could be one of them. These players that are missing time, you, you got to take some shots. But really, it's, when it it's comes, not fine. Oh, go ahead. No, no, yeah. It's, uh, sorry, I was just. Yeah, what were you gonna say? I was. Gonna I was say it's it's about identifying the the team that needs those three players or two yes. players. Like it doesn't matter who you're targeting. This is like a range. That's what we're talking about. A tier that you can look for. But mm -hmm. it's so contextual of your league of that guy might you might offer that trade and it doesn't make any sense because he has four wide receivers that are better. And then it's yep. dumb. You just wasted everyone's time. So it's really important to identify the weaknesses of your your, your co or managers in your league. Also, That's Mike, what? I just wanted to say, no problem. We love helping out with these questions. Um, thanks for bringing yeah. your questions in today, Mike. We love it. We love At it. At midnight, these charts are badass. I'm glad you're seeing them for the check first time today. Make sure you check them out on Reddit. Um, peaked in high school. And uh, for everyone watching, if you're finding value from these charts, you enjoy them. Um, Alex has a Patreon as well, peaked in high school on Patreon. There's additional charts in there. You get some extra value. And uh, it's a great way to support Alex for putting in the work to make these awesome charts for us. Someone just subscribed. So, so. let's go. Nice. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And just back to that last point, um, personally, I would be trying to ha hang on to Godwin maybe and maybe trade Damian Harris plus Mike Williams and get one of these other running backs. Maybe you still get a James Robinson type in that kind of trade. So Hell, I, think I doubt it. Maybe a Daryl Henderson type. I'm fine I was going to say, I'd be, I'd even be fine maybe with Leonard Fournette. Um, yeah. I, I think I would do that trade for Leonard Fournette if you were trying to upgrade at the running back position. True Blue in here says, boys, how's it going? I have one healthy running back this week. Sounds about <laughs> right, True Blue. Um, I've many others. 
<laughs> I had some really abysmal lineups with running backs, and uh, I had oh, to start the way the Simon drafts. <laughs> I'm sure you did, do, do Simon. <laughs> hey, but it's been working out in some yeah, leagues, yeah, yeah. some not. Also, SJ Douglas just want to revisit this. He said, "Darn, I took Russ. I just been regretting it. Was curious what you guys thought. Those two guys love the Russ trade, and I'm fine with yeah, it. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm the only one who preferred Tom Brady. So those guys loved the Russ side of that one. Um. Let's see. We, SJ yeah, Douglas we were just also saying said, Tom Brady is a little bit better for win now, but Russ definitely has more dynasty value. So yeah. Um, SJ Douglas with another one says I gave up Dearness Johnson and two late second round picks in exchange for Kareem Hunt. Yep. Round of applause for you. That's a great move. That is uh like that it. is a great move. Let's see. Especially Let's late see. seconds. Yeah. Uh, Josh wants to know any particular running back I should be aiming for to get with Zeke. So if you can upgrade Zeke trying to trade up. I'm fine rolling with Zeke into the playoffs. I don't think yeah. you need to try to upgrade. Um, yeah. How are you? Alex, going what do you think? Are are yeah. you are, are you are you piecing him with something else? Because if you're looking for just a swap, I mean, we we say that every every week. Swap, positional swaps like that aren't the kind of trades that get get really get done because there's no demand. There's nothing pushing it to go one way or the other. Uh, uh, it's it's are you, or are you looking to sell him and get like two pieces, like a running back and a wide receiver? That's really what matters. I, I mean. Would you swap him, uh, Josh, anyone straight, you know, one for one, Zeke for anyone lower than him? To for you scroll to back up with Zeke. I'm, I'm trying, I'm just like trying to like process the uh, question. I think he's saying um, like he's got Zeke, not comfortable with him, wants to yeah. trade him for a different running back. But I mean, trade obviously, for, I trade him for I, Swift. If someone would make that trade, I would take Swift. I think that's close. Even in though. standard scoring? Uh, no, not in standard. No, no, heck PPR, no. yeah, sure. PPR, PPR. I would. Absolutely. Half, I would probably even still go Zeke. Fine. Yeah, I'd rather Zeke. I don't trust it. Joshua, I I think you should be comfortable rolling with Zeke, but if you're not, that's where you need to start looking at some wide receivers, maybe pair him with a, I don't know. It's got to be a relatively good value wide receiver, maybe like a Michael Pittman, a Devonta Smith. Jerry Judy. Yeah, pair him with one of those, maybe try to go for an Alvin Kamara. Um, Yeah, Yeah, you can. No, I, I mean, I wouldn't just be trying to go for Alvin Kamara doing that. It, I would need to be getting one of these running backs if I were doing that. At least Chubb or someone like, you know, someone that's yeah. not injured. I wouldn't want to trade an injured, potentially that's injured. Fair. We yeah. don't know what Zeke is. He's, he's, I mean, it looks like he's going to play, but is Pollard going to have more of touches? Like, I mean, it's a short week, so yeah. it's tough. Pollard's good. Pollard's good. Yeah. Pollard is good. Running back. <laughs> I had to start him in a lot of leagues last week, but you know what? That could have been a lot worse. Um, JL says his Patreon is lit. An endorsement from JL over on the Patreon. Um, we got Dr. Doof. Josh, I didn't know you were in the chat. Um, uh, yeah. said what Sometimes running back from time to time? <laughs> what running back or wide receiver could I get for Antonio Gibson and Antonio Brown in full PPR? Prefer to get someone with a good playoff schedule as well. Um, the Antonio trade. <laughs> double Antonio. He says I'm sick of all these Antonios on my team. So I'm guessing Gibson Did he say that? fall. No. He did. Okay. Say that. I was about to. Was, that's actually so a Gibson's point. at 22, and Brown was down there by Gary Judy, if I remember correctly. Yep. Josh. It's going to be 30, 33.5. Yeah. He's, he's, oh, it's in the comments. Sorry. <laughs> the comment was blocking it. <laughs> um. So 33.5. So let's look at like the, the wide receivers first. I feel like we've looked at some running backs in that range. What are we looking at for wide receivers that he could upgrade to there? We're talking Mike about Evans, this range right Jamar here. Chase. Yeah. This might be a great window to go grab Jamar Chase, Ooh. Debo Samuel. <laughs> CD, you can go. You can go ballsy and try and get cd knowing he's pro i mean i just saw the report that if he gets packed he went through stage step five of the protocol so there's a chance he actually plays tomorrow uh cd yes. was reasonable uh henderson Mont- montgomery those are the guys for sure yeah this this yeah. little range right here this window that you're looking at i think you, good value i would do it for daryl henderson david montgomery leonard fortnite Debo samuel jamar chase mike evans cd lamb any of those players i'd be cool doing it Alex, Stupid would you Patterson. do it for Cordero Patterson? Oh, I they- the <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to answer first. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I think I would. I, Assuming I, I think you do I would. Yeah. Yeah. Would you do it for I, Kittle? Uh, depends who my tight end is. Yeah. No, if I've got a, uh, if I've got Mark Andrews, no. no. Um, hell, even if I've got Dallas Goddard, maybe not. But if I've got like lower than that, if I'm just streaming, if I'm starting Uzama, if I'm starting a fan, something like that, I probably would. Kittle is a difference maker. You worry about the injuries, but that dude is a monster. Would you do yeah. it for Kittle, Alex? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 if, if I didn't need to replace the running back and wide receiver, the, if I didn't need to replace one of the Antonios, uh, let's say Kittle was going to be your flex. 
would you trade those two for Kittle for your flex? No, I mean, no, right? It doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, <laughs> we're just curious. Your I, can, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah, now, I don't think uh, the person that stands out to me the most here, I, I CD Lamb. I, I would love to get CD Lamb in this trade. Um, he's got a. Hey, you're asking someone with good playoff schedule. CD Lamb's got it. Um, I love his matchups in the playoffs, and at most he might miss this week. So, yeah. I, point, I definitely Josh. think he's back the week after. So CD Lamb stands out the by far the most to me. Also, JXC saying, guys, ten and one. Appreciate all the help. But any thoughts on Montgomery? I think Montgomery is a great play rest David? of the season. Um, yeah, David Montgomery. I think he's a great play rest of the season. If you've got him, I would be holding right now, not trying to trade him away. Um, Alex, what are your thoughts on David Montgomery? Schedule looks like he's going to be another league winner, just like last year. That term's overused, mm -hmm. but but <laughs> he did it last year, so why can't he do it again? Uh, I think this guy just wanted a humble brag at ten and one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jay's the Guys man. Ten and one. Yeah. Um, uh, how about that last trade for David Montgomery, Antonio Gibson, and uh, Antonio Brown for David Montgomery? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would do it. Yeah, yeah. 100%. With it um, let's hit this one real quick. Fire Muther, Hunter Henry. Who would you prefer to have rest of the season? I'll tell Muth. you their trade value first. Yeah, who's yeah. currently... I, I, I would rather have Muth, but uh, seven for Pat Fry Muth and 3.5 for Hunter Henry. I yeah. think Hunter it's Henry is the epitome of a replaceable tight end. I think he's not going to catch a t uh, touchdown every touch week. Touchdown or bust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, that's what you're looking at with Hunter Henry's touchdown or bust. Pat Fryermuth is going to be more consistent for you, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go Fryermuth here. Um, also, just pour one out for SJ Douglas. Lost Derek Henry, Raheem Mostert, Gus Edwards, Calvin Ridley, Juju, and Kittle on IR for a while. Yeah, that's a rough dynasty start to the year over there, SJ. Um, Andrew wants to know, would you trade away Javante and Scary Terry for Kareem Hunt and mm. AB? Um, so this is another one of those trades that's just same position for same position. Man. So I'm just doing some quick math here. So Javante's at 15.5, Terry McLaurin at 24.5. I don't think I would. I like without seeing the values, I'm curious what the numbers are going to say. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I view it as a slight upgrade at running back from Javante to Kareem Hunt, but they're both in a shared backfield whenever Kareem Hunt comes back. But Kareem Hunt's coming back from injury. So that's an extra risk level. So it brings them even closer. The gap between Scary Terry and AB is much larger for me. And you've got the injury concern again. So you're trading for two players currently injured. One of them is a slight upgrade. One of them is a big downgrade. I'm I'm staying away from the injured uncertainty because the value is not there for this one, Andrew, for me. And the value on the trade chart does not add up whatsoever. The uh, the Scary Terry Javante side is much more valued. And actually, Javante Williams has more value than Kareem Hunt. Scary Terry, much more value than Antonio Brown. He does Alex say PPR. About does this? that change it at all for you? Full PPR? Not really. I mean, uh, I mean, I understand Kareem Hunt gains a little bit more value, uh, obviously, in that format. But, you know, I, I really don't view I, – I do. I would rather have Kareem Hunt for the playoff run. But yep. I don't view Javante and Kareem Hunt that much differently. Yep, that, that's where I am as well. The PPR was probably what's, like, making me view Kareem Hunt a little bit higher than Javante to begin with, uh, that PPR value. But, yeah. I, I don't think I could do this. Alex, are you doing this? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I, I don't like to buy injuries like that, even if they're potentially coming back this week. And I wouldn't want to buy two. That's 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 too much risk for me. And that's not how I play personally. Yeah. Um, Alex, I'm just I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. No, I was just going to say there's also the chance that, you know, coming off the bye, I want to see what happens with the Broncos uh, this week. This is the most important week for Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon going forward. In my mind, just because, you know, we've seen teams coming off the bye week, getting the rookies more involved. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I, I, I want to see before I sell Javante Williams personally. But hey, if it goes the other way, it was a good sell then. So <laughs> we got Tim in here. Tim says, Dynasty, who are Dalvin Cook and or Calvin Ridley worth trying to get slightly younger since I have an Ice Cube's chance in hell of making the playoffs? <laughs> that, that's um, a lot Dalvin of Cook plus Calvin Ridley is probably going to get you quite a bit. I know these are redraft charts. Uh, so the value might be able to get Jonathan different. Taylor with that, huh? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Dalvin Cook plus, plus Calvin Alex, Ridley. Alex, I'm like, no, no way. No way. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> what about <laughs> Dalvin <laughs> Cook? Plus a first. Do you think Tim could get Jonathan Taylor? No. Depends I mean, where maybe. the first is, but no, probably not. Well, he's saying he doesn't well, have he's a, not gonna make uh, the ice playoffs, cube so chance in hell of making the playoffs. So that's it's, top yeah. four at least pick in the draft this coming year. It's a, it's an early, early first. I yeah. think the, uh, Dalvin Cook's one of the best sells out there for a team that's not making the playoffs this year. He's 26 years old. I, I age 27 for running back scares me. Uh, <laughs> so, and Dalvin cook has had an injury riddle past himself a little bit. 
I'm not saying it's not going to be effective next year, but the cliff will come. He, oh, he and you're not getting number two first in my dynasty league, and two, one was a late first, uh, but two first Dalvin next. Cook? Yeah, Dalvin Cook and Madison. Yeah. He got both of them. Okay. Um, and then, I mean, what, really, the real question: What the hell is Ridley worth? Like, is he? He's worth a second. First, though. You think a first still, Josh? Yeah. I probably wouldn't be sending a first for Ridley. I, I would probably cap out at a second, but I understand that maybe his market value and I'm just not getting any shares of Ridley. The one thing I am going to say, Tim, if you're trying to upgrade at running back and not get picks, this is probably the hardest time of year to get a trade like this done because the upgrade at running back is going to be a crucial piece to a competing team's playoff run, most likely. And, and when it comes down to it, wide receivers are what you want to rebuild around in Dynasty. Yep. So I'd probably go, be going the wide receiver route, trying to get a Jamar Chase maybe. Jamar Chase Justin plus, Jefferson. yeah. Would you like if he could get Jamar Chase plus DeAndre Swift for Dalvin Cook plus Cup? I don't, I don't <laughs> think it. No, that's not that's, happening. I'm trying to. Not, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a trick. You're not going to get much plus. Here. You're not going to get much plus on top of Jamar Chase in this trade. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if Jamar, Jamar Chase owner would trade Ridley and Cook because the, the Jamar Chase oh, is yeah. probably part of the reason they're in the freaking playoffs. That, that's another issue is like you're trying to sell Dalvin Cook to a team that's competing right now that's trying to win and they're getting Calvin Ridley is part of that is not going to help that equation. In a in a dynasty league, Jamar Chase could be a player that's on a losing team because he was drafted pretty early in rookie drafts. He may not be the piece that turned their team around. So I, I would look around in the league, Tim, um, see, see, look for some of these young wide receivers. Look for CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, um, A.J. Brown see what these teams records are looking like and obviously jamar chase justin jefferson it's probably solo one for one maybe cd lamb with the with the down week maybe recent perception you could get cd lamb plus for dalvin cook but um yeah josh is right building around wide receivers is a much safer way to go whenever you're constructing a rebuild um patrick wants to know any reason why andrews is still fourth on the chart for tight ends he's the number two tight end right now second in targets feels like he's undervalued so he did bump up yourself, value Alex. This week. Explain <laughs> yourself. Why are you doing this to us? <laughs> I, I just, just a disclaimer. Once again, these the seed data for this is experts consensus ranks. I'm in fact not an expert. I don't generate ranks. I have personal ones, but uh, uh -huh. I wouldn't necessarily even trust my personal ranks. I'm just a dude who's good at models. Uh, so this is I, I kind of agree with them. I I but I think Kittle, Waller, and Andrews are the same tier. I think they same can tier. Could, same exact. I, I personally like Kittle the best and then probably Andrews and then probably Waller. And some of that's format dependent, of course. PPR, Waller maybe goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in standard, Andrews is probably going to be mm -hmm. above Kittle and Waller because he's going to score more touchdowns. Uh, but I mean, it's really, I, I, I agree that the, the probably the gap, even though it is only what, four points, yeah. it's probably too much. Uh, yep. And I was going to say it looks bigger because of the concentration of wide receivers in that range. Yeah. There's a ton of wide receivers in the 25 to 26 range. So it's making it look like a bigger gap. They're in the same tier. They're only four points apart. They're similarly valued. Like Alex said, some people may prefer Andrews. Some people may prefer Kittle rest of the year. Um, but yeah, I think maybe Andrews is slightly undervalued right now. That might be a sign that if you're looking for a tight end in this tier, he could be the one that you go and target right now. Or is that yeah. Waller is overvalued? Is that... Ooh. I mean, um, I, this seems appropriate. I was uh, going to say this seems about right for Waller in my eyes. This this area above um, Thielen, below Terry McLaurin. Yeah. I think Andrew should be higher, but I think Waller's in a safe range. I'm not going to downgrade Waller because I think Andrews might should be slightly above him right now. Um, Blake says, and, and, Z oh, sorry, real fast on this, I would take uh, Mark Andrews. He would be my second for the rest of the season, my second favorite. But if I had George Kittle and someone offered me Mark Andrews for George Kittle, I don't know if I could do the trade, you know, no, I, so, I, like, I would take George Kittle. So it's like, I'm just keeping whoever I have. So they're absolutely in the same tier. Like Alex said, sorry. Blake says Zeke for Godwin Montgomery PPR. So while Josh Ooh. pulls up those values. Alex, what do you think about this trade? Oh, I know who's going to win already. It's going to yeah. be Godwin and Montgomery by a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 plus nearly 30. I mean, it's going to so be not a lot. 10, plus 10, Godwin. 10 extra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And PPR, yeah. it's even more because Godwin goes up a little bit. Uh, and But Monty goes down, I guess, in PPR comparatively to Zeke. Because he uh, – can he catch a ball? I'm not – Monty's They've been known to grab in the a ball past. or two. Yeah. One or yeah. four, right? But, I, I think uh, he had 50-plus receptions last yeah. year after Tariq Cohen went out, but he Let's hasn't see. been as involved this year. Is yeah, the most the catches line? he's had so far this year is three in one game, two in one game, two in another, one-one. So yeah. He's fine. Uh, I, yeah. yeah, especially if you 
you need depth, if you need that wide receiver, I don't see the downgrade from Zeke to Monty as hugely significant in this, in this scheme of things. I, I like this. I'm about it's to a, it's a tier downgrade from Zeke to Montgomery for me, but it's worth it yeah. to pick up Godwin if he's really upgrading your wide receiver. Um, I'm right there with you, Alex. I fully agree on that one. And we love getting the best player in a trade, but this is one of those where the value is absolutely worth it. <laughs> Big Forces had to change my name and pick. I wonder who you were before, uh, but you got to buy low and sell <laughs> high wideout guy. Um, so is there someone right mm-hmm. now, Alex, that you think stands out as a buy low wide receiver? I mean, just looking at the trend, the buy low is going to be probably DK Metcalf, right? Like, do we think last week and the way Russ looked is going to be the way it is? Uh, no. It's <laughs> Justin. What's up, just Justin? The, the, concern, the concerning no. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's risky because you're because you're you're paying. You're paying 26 or more, or more to get DK. But at that value, I, I would buy potentially because I think he can be up a tier. I think he can jump a tier. Uh, but there's some other great ones as well. I, I think Lockett's the same argument to be made where I think he can be up in that next tier pretty easily. Uh, what about AJ Brown? I know he's been really disappointing so far this year. Do you guys believe that he's going to get it back together, that this Titans passing game is going to upgrade? Josh, I know you're a big AJ Brown guy. I, I do think AJ Brown's going to finish the year strong. As long as he can stay healthy, I know he got nicked up last game, but I, I really do believe that the Titans are going to figure out the passing game a little bit and AJ Brown finishes the year um, very strong. Yeah. Purely injury concern. I mean, the dude's, yeah. just, the dude's just great. I mean, it's he just plays yeah. the game better like than most people on the field. So as long as – and, and are they piling up this year again? Because, I mean, it's – every week that he's on the injury report and it's something new a lot of the time it seems and he got banged up even more last week right i uh i i have a new answer i i was just looking at the negative ones and that was a mistake because there's a name in that tier that i think belongs up with mike evans jamar chase based on the target volume he's been getting and that's keenan allen I think the public perception of Keenan <laughs> Allen is still too low. His target volume is absolutely insane. Uh, there are only two wide receivers in the NFL right now with more targets on the season than Keenan Allen. Um, here, one second. Let me pull up his game log just because I want to make sure I'm reading the right numbers. But his targets, 13, 11, 13, 11 over the past four weeks. Uh, he had five and nine, but then again before that, 11, 12, 8, 13. This dude has been unbelievably targeted. I believe it's only Cooper Cup. And who was the other name that had more Tyree targets? Than Tyreek Hill that had more targets than uh, than Keenan Allen so far. And Devontae the Adams was tied. I believe. Yep, Devontae Adams is tied at 106 targets on the year so far. Um, I, I think Keenan Allen still – a buy low, even with his value rising. And he has some positive touchdown regression coming too. Like, he oh, yeah. It, 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 but he's never, I mean, what is 2017? He was a touchdown guy, but every other year it's like five touchdowns. It's, it, it's, I mean, he's going to get more. Herbert's moving the ball. It just looks good when, when he can put it together. I, I, I agree with you. So who's the sell? Who, who are you moving away from? Who do you think's overvalued here? That's a tough um, one. So, I mean, I'll mention these guys. I'm not saying they're absolute cells, and I'm not saying I'm actually that concerned about them, but the Bucks wide receivers, uh, they've been they've been great lately, uh, but they're going to be getting Antonio Brown back. Gronk looked great last week. I know Tom Brady looks fantastic, but how, how can they really all four have a great game every week? No, um, they're going to be inconsistent. And is that really what you want for your playoff push? I'm not, you know, if you can just capitalize on extreme value on these guys, maybe, maybe. Mike Evans um, being the highest ranked one here, you know, it's significantly more value than Chris Godwin, which is a little, a little surprising. So maybe one of the injury that he was dealing with. And no. uh, I'm assuming that that was my guess because they're, they should be probably closer than this. Uh, most, I think, I think those are good names, Josh. Um, I, I would probably depending on the type of player you are. I think Chris Godwin probably offers more consistency rest of the season. Mike Ivan, Mike Evans is going to have more upside. They'll probably finish with similar amount of fantasy points rest of year. Um, it's just you want the guy who can possibly blow up two, three touchdowns, um, give you a week, or the the PPR guy, which is Chris Godwin, uh, which is where I would stand on that one. Another name that I wanted to bring up. I'm not positive he's a sell high, but he stands out to me with where he is compared to other receivers, and that's Stephon Diggs being the fourth wide receiver on the chart ahead of guys like Tyreek Hill. Um, but T- uh, Stephon yeah, Diggs that, is a stud crazy. in his own. He's a stud in his own right. But if you could trade him for DeAndre Swift, I would probably do it. Um, what do you guys think? 
Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have Tyreek Hill and DeAndre Swift over Stephon Diggs. As would season. I. Team dependent, obviously. But Would you want Debo over Diggs? <sighs> no. Uh, I think that's where Diggs belongs in this tier list, is in that tier with Debo Samuel, Jamar Chase, Mike Evans. I think he belongs right there in that grouping. And let's bump Keenan Allen up there, too. And those five names are so similar in my eyes rest of season. Yeah, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Um, we can hit this one real quick. Robbie Anderson or Ayuk rest of season. Let's see where their values are on the trade chart. I'm curious about I mean, this. I, one. I have an answer. <laughs> uh, Brandon Ayuk's at nine. I'm assuming Robbie Anderson's got to be lower here, right? Is he even one here? He's <laughs> there. He is oh, 0.5. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Got out of the negatives. It's Ayuk for me, even without looking at the charts. Yeah. Um, Alex, you agree? Yeah. Wasn't even close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just going back to Debo real fast, that's the reason why we love Ayuk and why I'm just a little, I'm not nervous for Debo. Debo's going to be fine. Um, I'm nervous about him maintaining the elite position just because he's playing more running back snaps. He's still playing wide receiver snaps, but this is going to, this is getting Ayuk and Kittle more involved in the offense. Um, but yeah, Debo <laughs> playing more running back snaps and he looks great doing it. Yeah, yeah he's, remind- he's the best running back on that team, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just is. He, I, if I he could was disagree with you. Back, he'd be the best. It's not close. It was it was wild last week, and the num- like it just kept happening. Guys that catch the ball, um, Debo Samuel, Jalen Waddle, shoot, who was the other one that had a rushing touchdown? There was a there was a third oh, yeah. Jarvis Landry. Um, yeah. Jarvis Landry yeah, 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 had one, yeah, yeah. and then Travis Kelsey also Kelsey. had a rushing touchdown in this past week. We had four rushing touchdowns from receivers or tight ends who are their receivers, but um. I just thought that was crazy. We're going to have to start talking about rushing upside for receivers instead of just receiving upside for backs. Hmm. Um, Navin says, I have Gesicki. Should I try to upgrade the position? I think my problems at RB a little bit bigger, but was wondering if it was worth it if I could upgrade. Um, I'm fine with Gesicki as a tight end rest of season. He's not a difference maker at the position, but he's also not a streaming guy. He's he's above that range of streamers. He's a guy you can comfortably trot out onto your into your lineup each and every week. Um, Alex, would you be trying to upgrade going into the playoffs if Kasiki was your tight end? I mean, you're, you're right. There's there's almost a there's a group at the top where absolutely you can't upgrade. Then there's a group in the middle of how, how would you reasonably upgrade? I think that cutoff for how would I reasonably upgrade tier would be what Goddard, where if the right opportunity presents itself, where maybe let's say the Kittle owner uh, needs something that you have depth with. He said he doesn't have a ton of running backs, so. You have an extra wide receiver that you could try and target the Kittle owner or something. Sure, why not? But that's probably the level where it'd be hard to justify consolidating your depth to to upgrade that that position. Yep, I'm right there with you. You're fine Alex. with Gesicki. Yeah. And how low well, how low would you guys go? Would you put Goddard in the same group of probably fine? Yeah. Who, oh yeah, one? yeah. Who's the next one down? I scroll down. After after Gesicki and Goddard. Yeah. And, oh, are, are we putting T.J. Hawkinson like? Where are we putting DJ Hawkins? In? It's got to be in the same group. Just because. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I, I, I actually slightly prefer TJ Hawkins. The next guy looks like it's Friar Muth, I believe. How would you feel about Dawson Knox? Dawson Knox for me. Yeah. Where, where is Knox? He must be. He's uh, right yeah, by Friar Muth. He's at Friar, six. Okay. Friar Muth is at seven. They're, they're in that same range right there. What about Schultz? What, uh, Schultz or Hurts? Nah, nope. Uh, nope. Schultz scares uh, me. With and Hurts is going to be inconsistent. Um, touchdown or bust for for Ertz or two touchdowns or bust like we saw this week um that's not whenever we say touchdown or bust it's not necessarily a bad thing because these touchdown or bust guys have touchdown weeks um but I'm trying not to start them if I can avoid it but yeah Josh I I like Dawson Knox Knox and Fryermuth I'd be I'd be fine with as well in that range I think they're absolutely mm-hmm. acceptable where the, I don't I don't have the strong urge to have to upgrade for sure those, yes. those guys with same line Schultz I am though Schultz and Ertz is where I'm like Hey, we all have the same line. That's perfect. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Um, Shamar says, should I, before we get into this question, I'll remind everyone, we've got yes. only about three minutes left before we are going to jump out of here. So thank you everyone who came in with questions. We're going to try to rapid fire through a couple of these at the end here, but we want to make sure we're, we're helping you out as best we can. Shamar says, should I trade James Conner and a small value wide receiver for Leonard Fournette? Because I'm worried that James Conner value is going to go down once Edwards comes back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's a, that's a great move. Josh, you, how do you, feel? you might have to add more than a small value wide receiver. I did, I think, he meant he done. meant Chase Edmonds, but yeah, yeah, um, it, not Edwards. Edmonds. Yeah, I, I read it, but I think we all understood oh, what it meant. There. Yeah, My yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. Shamar. I no, apologize. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I would absolutely be trying to make that move myself. 
Navin says, I have Diggs, Jefferson, Godwin, and Mike Williams. Would it be a good move to sell Godwin high? So, Alex, you were talking about Godwin's value maybe a little bit depressed right now. Um, but would you move Chris Godwin right now? Yeah, if, if you can get some fair value. I think with that, that core right there, I would just look for teams that need that wide receiver uh, and have plenty of running back depth and just say, and be willing to trade any of those four for a reasonable value in running back. And sometimes I like to be like, hey, guys, I clearly have enough wide receivers. You have running backs. Let's get this done. Which one do you want? What makes sense? And let them come to you. And a lot of time you might be able to get even better. Maybe maybe that guy's super high on Mike Williams and you can get it done for the same value you would have given up Godwin. So uh, that's how I like to negotiate a lot of time is, is open and just, you know, hey, here's where I'm coming from. Here's where I see you. Uh, any of them are movement. Or I would move uh, besides maybe Jefferson because I like him a lot. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they love Diggs so much that they'd be willing to give up an Austin Eckler for him. Know what I mean? You don't know. That's a great point, Alex. Don't pigeonhole them into just Chris Godwin with the core you have. You've got value at the wide receiver position. I love everything uh, you said, Alex. Pitch Dark says, I have Alan, Terry, DJ, Devonta, and OBJ. Since I clinched a spot, am I looking to consolidate to get a big stud? Josh, would you be looking to consolidate, maybe trade two of these guys for an upgrade at wide receiver, or are you cool rolling with this into the playoffs? I mean, are these every every week starter kind of guys for you? Are they in your lineup? Again, consolidating is great, but if it's hurting your lineup as a whole, then it's not always worth it. So it, it depends. Um, I, I think maybe like fine. if you could do Terry plus Devonta for mm -hmm. an upgrade at wide receiver, like Terry plus Devonta for a Tyree kill. I don't know if you're getting that done, but um, I, I'd be cool with that. Alex, what do you think here? I don't think you can do Allen and Terry because those are those are probably your two starters. Yeah, like you said, Allen plus DJ or Devonte or Terry plus DJ or or, or BJ, maybe someone super high on OBJ. Those are the type of trades, sure, because OBJ yeah. is absolutely on your bench or Devonte, who is who's good. Uh, those are the type, but I don't think you can pool Allen and, and Terry at, and then look for someone a stud stuff. I don't think that's. And right. I read that question wrong. I thought it was Josh Allen, not Keenan Allen. Those are great wide receivers. Yes, consolidate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all good guys that is gonna be it for us today we got to jump out of here thank you so much for bringing all of your questions in and alex thank you so much for joining us today we really appreciate you taking the time for everybody watching if you are not already following our boy alex make sure you go follow him on twitter at peaked in high school and make sure you go follow him on reddit as well peaked in high school that's where you will see his post each and every wednesday with the new and updated trade value charts and if you found value from this, consider heading on over to his Patreon, Peaked in High School as well, and subscribing over there. Alex, you want to tell people a little bit about what comes extra in the Patreon when they subscribe? Sure. So I I, I post every week in Reddit the, the typical four-point passing touchdown standard, 0 0.1 PPR, 0 0.5 and 1. But over on, uh, over on Patreon, you'll get access to live values, a Google spreadsheet where my code just pushes to it. Uh, we'll run that when big things happen. And then also super flex two QB six point per passing touchdown. I'm working on three wide receiver as well as some bigger flex for next year. And then uh, maybe some dynasty. I've, I've been going here. It's, just, yeah. that was, that was tough. Uh, it's the picks, the picks make it. Oh, it's hard, I've been it's dynasty for a couple of years now, and I have absolutely yeah. no idea how to value picks still. It's, it's, so hard. <laughs> it's, so hard. it's even just parsing one site uses different nomenclature for the same pick. So it's, it's getting those to whatever. I won't get into that, but I've been working on it. That's my off season. My goal is to have dynasty before the uh, NFL draft. That's my goal in the off season. That's, That's awesome. Be awesome. So guys, yeah. if you, if you enjoy these trade charts, want a little bit more and want to support Alex, head over to his Patreon and peaked in high school and support him over there. That is going to be it for us today on this stream for the trade values chart. Uh, Josh and I will be live with, uh, with some other folks playing, fantasy fortune at 3 p.m eastern time today so pop in over there if you want to play some fantasy football games and then after that josh will be live with our boy joey Wright answering your questions at fantasy football office hours at 4 15 it is a triple stream day for the front yeah. fantasy team alex thank you so much again for joining us thanks guys have a great thanksgiving trade him fantasy fun let's go <laughs>